Hi there, welcome back. By popular demand, here's a little video on the antenna that I'm using for AM reception on the tube radio restorations that I do. Uh, it's the mini whip antenna, which uh, is uh, very well documented on the net. If you type in mini whip on your Google search, you'll find hundreds of references to the either the original article on it which I think you should see because the guy who designed this uh, deserves a little bit of credit or um, numerous uh, sellers of kits for this particular antenna. You may be forgiven for uh, a little bit of skepticism if you think that something this size just will not replace a 30 meter piece of wire as an antenna for your AM bands and I understand that because that's exactly how I felt when I first read about this. I use a 30 meter long wire antenna. I live on the top floor apartment, so I uh, ran it under the ledge of the roofing. And it's unobtrusive and it worked quite well for a long time. Then when I read about this, I thought there's no way this thing's gonna replace that antenna. There is no way that something this size, because effectively that's where your antenna is, that's just a pipe that's uh, used to lift it above the roof line, but that something this size was going to do what a 30 meter piece of wire was gonna do. However, as you'll see a little bit further along in the video, not only does it do what the 30 meter piece of wire does, but it does it a lot better. And to the point where I'm going to remove that wire and um, stick exclusively to this one or something smaller if it comes up. But let me describe to you what is uh, involved here? I won't go into the theory. The uh, information on the web is very complete and you can find the description for the circuit, for the testing that was done very extensively on the uh, workings of the antenna, for the noise level testing and so on, as well as the number of videos where people actually show you with an SDR radio what difference it makes. I prefer to use the actual radio and you'll hear the difference shortly. So what exactly are we talking about? Well, we have a piece of pipe. This is a 40 millimeter uh, water pipe that I bought and cut. It's about 10 centimeters long. There is a cap to it that fits on the end there, which will then be glued and made weatherproof. There is an adapter here, which makes uh, an easy link up between this thick pipe and the thinner one inch water pipe that's used to take this up on the roof. There's the coax coming through there. This is normal, I think this is RG58 coax. Nothing critical. And then of course there's the actual antenna over here. There is also a um, powering uh, connector here. This is used to feed power, 12 volts, from a wall wart into the output to the mini whip and that provides the power for the circuit which is 12 volts this is then decoupled and isolated inside and i'll show you that as well so the details this particular antenna is built on a piece of uh, printed circuit board this one here is actually a little bit fancier much fancier than the first one i built which was following the instructions on uh, on the paper on it on the web they describe just uh, cutting part of the PCB out so you can get different islands on which to solder your components they don't go into a a circuit board design or anything like that but um, after building the first one bug style which is uh, the way they describe it and it worked very very well I decided to invest a bit of time and do it properly and this is my version of properly. So what we have here really is this part of the PCB, which is not edged, is actually the receiving element. It capacitively couples to the magnetic fields, I believe it is. And it feeds a signal into that part there, which is a FET. It's a um, high impedance input here, so it acts as a buffer. This is a J310 FET, which is a very low input capacitance, so it doesn't reduce your bandwidth. That then feeds the RF amplifier, which uh, this particular one is the one recommended. 
and it does make a difference. It's got a very high bandwidth so that um, you can get uh, a good 30 megahertz range out of this, or 10 kilohertz to 30 megahertz, which covers your long wave, medium wave, and short wave bands. And the rest is capacitors and uh, resistors and a couple of inductors. But again, very well described in the paper. The way this works, it's actually powered from the coax center. The uh, 12 volt supply comes through here, and I'll show you how we achieve that from this box. And it feeds the circuit, and then the signal goes back into the same uh, feed line, where it is separated at the at the termination box, and then fed to your radio. So nothing dramatic there. Just uh, very careful. Uh, be very careful of uh, you know solder shorts and bad connections. If you do that right, everything works. And this one certainly does. Now the way this thing fits is I've soldered the coax directly to the end there. You could fit a BNC connector or another connector on there. But I prefer to solder it. It's very firm. And that then goes into the pipe. And the lid of the pipe gets stuck in here. And the one inch pipe gets stuck in there. And you've got yourself your antenna to put on the roof or wherever you want to put it, away from buildings, away from walls, as high up as you can, but don't go crazy. Your neighbors won't like it. But it works. It works very, very well. I've got it at about two meters from the roof line, above the roof line, and that's more than enough. It's not uh, particularly obtrusive. It's not ugly. It's certainly a lot neater and cleaner than having a wire running around the roof line of your apartment or your house. So let's have a look at the little box there. I decided to connect to the radio with this uh, coax. These are the two connectors that go into the signal and ground uh, points of the radio. That is permanently connected in there. There's a bit of stress relief over there just so that it doesn't pull. This is a plastic case, very simple. I've put in a bit of uh, alum aluminum tape to act as a shield. Not strictly necessary, but it does help. The lid's also shielded. Then uh, the supply comes in here, 12 volt supply from a wall wart. It's got a slight filter cap over here. It goes through, again, visible on the schematic, a diode, an inductor. There's another filter over there to the, to the um, center pin of the RCA going to the mini whip. The signal coming out of the mini whip goes through that capacitor to your um, coax that then ends up as your radio signal. And bingo, it's done. Right, let's see how this thing works. Now, what I've got here is a Grundig 4198 stereo. This thing was restored recently. I have the, the entire video series on my channel. And I'll link above uh, if you want to have a look at that. But today we're not looking at the radio itself. I want to show you the difference between the reception with the mini whip and the reception with the long wire antenna. And just to uh, add another variable in, we've got a ferret antenna switch which we can bring in, which uh, disconnects the external antenna connector and uses the ferrite antenna which we have in here. So we can test that as well. So what we've got here, I'm going to go through a few of these channels on uh, medium wave and then long wave and then short wave. And I'll be switching in between the long wire and the mini whip so you can get an idea. You'll see on the screen when what is connected. Quite honestly, you don't really need that indication because you will hear the difference. Now, bear in mind, I'm uh, on the island of Madeira. We have one AM station here. The rest we're getting here is from the African mainland, Morocco and so on, and also from the Canary Islands. And um, yeah, have a look at this and see what you think. Además, coincidían en el mismo, lo de la humillación, que se ha salido para poner cintas en el zapato. Esta noche se está celebrando ahora mismo. بالنسبة لوكالة الأنباء الرسمية وكالة الأنباء الرسمية دائما تكون حريصة على المستقبل وعلى أن لا ينشر فيها أي خبر أو أي موضوع 
الا اذا كان يعني صادر من جهه رسميه ومؤكد وبالتالي لا تضطر بعد ذلك لحذفه الكوردي شوكلا في هذا الكاسو في فونكسيونات دي بورتافو دي لو ريكوسوس موتيفاسيون بيرسونال دي نوغا دي امبري كلاميتي فو بارا دي نوشيا ان كاسو كونكريتو كيرا ال Que bajamos su precio, sea cual sea. Llama al 902 555 485 902-555-485. Vamos, vente a la mujer. Condiciones en Luca.es. Onda Cero Madrid. En Onda Media, 95. a intentar prorrogar la vida del gobierno, por lo menos a que Sánchez pueda ganar el año que va a empezar ahora y que convoque elecciones pues, no sé, en noviembre o en diciembre eh, para que en este intervalo... Eh, inversiones en, en los últimos presupuestos y además eh, inversiones programadas a largo plazo, o sea que no, que no se limitaban al presupuesto de, de 2018. Especially people who are mentally ill uh, and they're orphans as well, they're defenseless and so. Notre terre, qui se tient dans un climat de haute tension, a pour enjeu principal pour le parti au pouvoir de rafler les 4 cinquièmes des sièges du Parlement. Il s'agit notamment de 73 des Right, that was the demo, and um, this is my conclusion. Long wave. This thing is magical. It actually picks up on long wave, which uh, you can't say the same for the long wire or the the ferrite antenna. You get very, very little on ferrite, um, even less on long wire, and with the mini whip, it is magical. I mean. With this antenna, I'm probably the only guy in Madeira that actually picks up Radio 4 from the UK. Um, it's quite amazing. So, low frequencies, um, long wave, it is fantastic. Medium wave, same can be said for medium wave. It picks up an enormous amount of uh, stations on medium wave, which you do not do if you stick to the uh, long wire or the ferrite antenna. Uh, I think you pick up about three or four. One of them is Madeira and one of them is, uh, the other three are from the Canary Islands. You will get nothing else when you put on the mini whip. This thing is completely chock-a-bock full of, uh, of uh, signals. So, medium wave, fantastic. Short wave, this is where it starts um, flipping over in terms of preference between the mini whip and the long wire. On the low end of the band, lower frequencies, so in the 5.5 megahertz range, approximately down here, 49 meters, the mini whip definitely beats the long wire. When you get to about the middle of the band, 8 to 12 megahertz, thereabouts, they're about equal, I think. 
probably equal because there's a little bit more static, a little bit more noise of the mini whip. And then as you get higher up here towards the 14, 15, 16 megahertz, I think the long wire actually beats it. Now, there could be a reason for that. It could be that, um, I mean, this is supposed to go up to 30 megahertz and I'm sure it does. Obviously, you've got uh, frequency drop off because of the capacitance of the FET, the buffer. Um, it's got a very low input capacitance, but it does have a capacitance. So the higher the capacitance, the quicker the drop off, the cutoff of frequency. Also, the um, uh, inductor that I put in there between the little metal um, receiver uh, element and the actual input of the buffer, that is supposed to avoid high frequencies coming in, like very strong FM stations, and flooding, or rather uh, overloading the front end. So that could also be cutting it off. The actual bandwidth of the RF transistor probably plays a role. A lot of things play a role as you go up in frequencies. So I may well keep the long wire for now, especially to test the higher frequencies. Now this one goes up to about 16.5 megahertz. Um, I have other receivers that actually go up to 27 megahertz. Some of them are specifically shortwave receivers. So I'll probably leave the long wire in for now. It's not bothering anybody. I really would like to see this thing reduced to one small antenna, but what you wish for and what you get are sometimes slightly out of phase. Anyway, that is the story of the Mini Whip. I hope you've enjoyed that. I hope you go and look up on the web, find the, the write-up. It's very, very well done by the original designer. I think you really have to see that. It's fantastic and uh, very well explained, much better than I could possibly do here if I went into a technical description, which was not my intent, obviously. So if I can motivate you to do something in this field this year, or this coming year, building a mini whip is definitely one of those things. We're arriving at the end of the year. This is probably the last video so for, for 2018. So thank you all for making 2018 very enjoyable for me with this hobby. I hope you've enjoyed it. I certainly have. And there's lots more coming in the forthcoming year. So Happy New Year to all. Bye for now.